funny rumming into you here. Hello and welcome to Intoxicated Masculinity. If it's Wednesday, we have a cocktail video coming at you, or in this case, a tasting video. Uh, this is the last video of our Venezuelan November, um, and so I thought it would be nice since uh, my wife just got back from uh, a trip from Venezuela a month or so ago, uh, and she brought me back a couple of uh, Venezuelan rums that we can't get here, that we would compare that to what we can get here, uh, and just kind of taste all through all six of the ones we have and see which one we like the best. So, without further ado, we're going to have these all get poured. I'm going to do this blindly so I won't know which one's which, um, and let's see where we land. So we've got our contestants here. We're gonna start off with what is probably the most recognizable rum here in the US, that is Diplomatico, in this case, Reserva. Um, this is, again, I think probably here in the States, probably about a 40 to $50 bottle of rum. Uh, it's 40% 80 proof. Um, everybody's pretty familiar with this one, I think. I've had it many, many, many times. Uh, another rum that's very familiar here in the States, uh, especially people that are fans of Venezuelan rums, is uh, Pampero Aniversario comes in these nice little leather pouches. I believe this is also 40%. Yeah, 40%. Um, this is kind of our household's favorite Venezuelan rum, I think by a pretty significant margin. Uh, it is a little sweet, but it also has a lot of cask on there that you've got a lot of uh, caramels and, uh, and uh, vanillas and stuff in there. So we like this one quite a bit. The next one that's been available pretty regularly here in the United States is Santa Teresa. Uh, so Santa Teresa is also an 80%, I believe. Sometimes they like to hide the percents in, on here so you can't find them. Out of there. Yes, that is going to be a 40%. Um, I like this one too. Um, this is probably less available than the other two, but you can find it. Newly available in the United States. Well, it, it's been available in Florida, I think, for a little while, but now you can find it in other places. And that is Carupinum. This is an 18-year aged uh, rum, um, also 40%. To be honest, I've had the six year and the 12 year, and I have not been a huge fan. They come off as a little bit oversweet to me. Next, we have our Bodega 1800. This uh, bills as a 12 year old rum. I believe it is also 40%. Uh, I don't know much about this one. Uh, Vanessa picked this one up when she was down there and brought it back. Um, so the, the taste will tell on that one. And finally, the one that I was kind of most excited to try out, this is uh, Cacique. Uh, this is an, another rum that's not available here in the States. This is the Antiguo. Um, this is actually might be considered a super premium. I'm not 100% sure on this one. Uh, the, the difference in prices uh, from the US to Venezuela is kind of Strange and always in flux. So we're gonna pour these out and see which one's best. We've got our contestants all lined up. I think I'm gonna start on my left. Again, I know what is in this test. I do not know which is which though. This has got a real rich nose. Not like molasses, but more like a kind of brown sugary, I guess. A little thinner nose on number two. Maybe even a little. So the this one, the nose is better but less. So the 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 uh, the stuff that's there smells better, but there's it's sort of. A little more muted. This one kind of, this one kind of smells like a cheaper rum to be honest. It smells kind of thin. Um, there's not any astringency necessarily, but it just tastes kind of kind of thin. Or that smells, it's kind of thin. This is nice. So this is a little more rich brown sugar, caramel, vanillas, just, just kind of a little more, a little more intense. And finally, what is that? This, this doesn't smell good. 
Uh, I'm sorry, one of these rums doesn't smell good. It smells, uh, there's a little bit of astringency there, I think. I can't quite place, there's some kind of odd there that doesn't, doesn't have much of a rum nose. Hmm, well, we'll get back to you. So, back to number one. Pretty good. It's got it's definitely been artificially sweetened, um, but it's got a good flavor. You know, uh, kind of brown sugary. Um, there's some cask influence there. If I was to guess, I'd say that's the Pompero. Now, the one thing that I think is a little unfortunate. I think every single one of these is 40 percent which I kind of wish they'd push that up a little bit. Um, and the reason why is, it's not just because I want more alcohol in my in my rum, although maybe a little bit of that. Um, it's because everything, when this, when this thing comes out of a cask, it's gonna be much higher than 80 proof, or 40%. And so what they do is they add distilled water to bring the proof down, and that also increases the amount of product they can push out. So that's why they, they proof down. Um, and a little bit of proofing is not necessarily a bad thing, but I think 40% is, is a little too much. Number two. Oh, that's pretty good. That's that better than the better than the first one actually. Um, nice deep, rich flavor. Decent finish. Um, again, and um, this is probably true for all these. There, there's definitely sweetener added to it, uh, or a little bit of sugar added to it. You get that, just a little bit syrupy taste in the back, but it's not it's not real heavy. Um, and the overall flavor is very good. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Number three. Puppy. So this is interesting. The initial palette. I find to be a little bit underwhelming, but it does have a very good finish on it. Um, and the finish seems to stick around quite a bit. It's kind of a tough one to rank. Again, the initial palette's not overwhelming. There's definitely a little bit of molasses on this one. So that kind of deeper pot still uh, kind of a flavor to it. All right, number four. Yeah, real thin nose on this one. Not bad. Um, it, it, the, the nose is thin, the, the flavor is a little thin too. It's not bad. I mean, none of these have been bad. Um, so far I think number three has the best finish, but I think the palette of number two is a little better. So let's move on to number five. I don't know, this is, this is like, the, if, if you were to take the ones we've had so far and average them out, this would be that. Um, just kind of, again, you, you're, the, the notes on all these have been very similar. And it does show you there is a certain degree of terroir when it comes to making rums, make, well, making any spirit, really. Um, it kind of, the the baseline is kind of vastly between a brown sugar and a molasses. I know there's molasses and brown sugar, but the molasses is a little bit deeper flavor, a little more... And it could be a could be pleasant or unpleasant, but uh, in this case, it's got that. Um, there's a little bit of age on it, obviously. Doesn't overwhelm. And let's move on to number six. This is the one with the nose that was confusing.
that's not very good. Um, it's it's funny. It's, it combines having kind of a underwhelming nose with also being really thin, and the, what flavor is there is kind of bad. Uh, I was gonna say funky, but not like in a Jamaican funk. Just kind of like more of just kind of like you know somebody that left something out a little bit too long. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely gonna be dead last. I don't think I need to taste that one again. Uh, I'm gonna go through one more time the first five and just kind of double check. I have to say I don't think of these five there is huge differences anywhere else. Again, we do have this guy is significantly down the, down the stack, but these five are all in in you know punching distance of each other. First one's pretty good. Um, it's again, it's got some, it's got a little bit of age on it. I mean, all these have a little bit of age on them. Um, you're, you're tasting a little bit of cask there, getting some of that artificial, or not artificial, some of that sugar, uh, kind of on the back of the palate. This is going to be a tough one between these. Again, that one, we know where that one's going. I think what I'm probably going to make my decision based on is to see which, because that, that syrupy sugar added kind of flavor at the back of the palate is something that always bothers me a little bit, even in rums that I like. Um, so I think I'll probably go with the one that has the least of that. You definitely notice in these first two, and I think we noticed in the third one, maybe it's a little less so. This one comes on real strong, in, in a good way. It's got a real strong palate. There's definitely sugar at the back, but it's not too much. Hmm. Go for these last two. See, this one is such an interesting one. Um, the palette, these two, I think, are definitely going to be my top two. But I can't decide. Um, the palette on number three is better, but the finish on number four is better. And I sort of have a tendency to side on the, on the side of finish, um, because finish just stays with you longer. That's just real solid. Um, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to go for um, four, then three, then five, one, two, and then six way down here. All right, so I got my choices locked in. Um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going I'm to look at the list, see what I picked, and we're going to come back and show you where all the bottles landed. So I have the uh, results in front of me, which are, are uh, a little interesting. Uh, so the first one's not super surprising. Uh, so we got our Bodega 1800 here. Um, to be fair, I probably shouldn't really have included in this. It's definitely not on the same price point as our other rums. Um, so one thing you notice when you do tasting is everything is comparative. Uh, no whiskey or rum or any other spirit has an absolute value of it is X number good. Uh, I sort of hate uh, the, you know, the, the, the numbers they give these, oh, this is a 93 versus whatever. Um, you compare things to the other things you're having. So while we're comparing this to, you know, 50, 60, $70 rums, um, it tastes bad. But if I'm comparing this to, you know, $25 rums, it actually probably would, you know, be one of the top tier rums in that, in that bracket. Or maybe, I mean, I don't know. But uh, I, I did want to sort of apologize for, it might not really be long in this category. But 
now that we've got that out of the way. So the one that really surprised me the most is one of the rooms that we love here, which is Pompero, and that was number two. Um, now again, to be fair, with this category, these are all really, really close together. Um, there just wasn't a whole lot separating them. I'm, I'm sort of making my decision off of little things. Again, my number one, uh, or the one that I rank number one, I rank number one just due to the finish. Because I think the finish sort of lasted longer and came out better than the other the other rums we tasted. All right, that being said, so number four um, is going to be our, yes. oh, this is actually our, our Super Premium, our Cacique. Again, it's good. It's There really aren't any losers here. Uh, again, I think Bodega's just kind of miscategorized, which is my fault. Um, again, these five, they're just all really close together. Uh, and our, uh, the one here that I thought was kind of interesting, which was, it kind of tasted like the average, which again, this is the average of a very good category, uh, and that was our Santa Teresa. So that came in at number three. Um, again, all these are really solid. Um, number two, surprisingly enough, because I'm not typically a huge fan of Diplomatico, I like the Mantuano a lot, uh, but the Reserva came in at number two. And uh, I started off by saying that I tried the, the, the Carupano uh, 6 and 12 year and I didn't particularly like them. I was expecting this, very much expecting this to finish in sort of the bottom tier. Um, and that's the one that I picked that was the best. Again, initial palette, I think the Diplomatico is probably a little bit better, but I feel like the Carupano 18 just has a little bit longer finish, a little bit more satisfying finish. And I think, at least for my palate, that's that's what I kind of gravitate towards. Uh, again, all these are very, very good rums. You're gonna be happy with any of these. Um, but apparently, Krupen 18, at this price point, is the best rum, and that is non-negotiable by anyone ever. Um, and on that bombshell, I wanna thank everybody for watching our Venezuelan month. Um, please try these rums out, tell me what you think. Tell me in the comments below what, what Venezuelan rums you like. And I wanna thank everybody for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a good drink and have a good day. Que yo a Venezuela en esa mierda, caballero.